On the last video, I finally got suspension and wheels on the low cost project. The only downside is now, it's kind of hard to move it about the garage to get access to either side. Oh, hello Dolly. Oh, come on, you must have seen that coming. Hello YouTubes. So it's very easy to get demotivated when you're working on a project car. Especially when you're building something like this with no off-the-shelf parts and you decide to use an engine that's extremely rare and unreliable apparently, but we'll find out soon. The goal for the moment, because you need lots of goals in this kind of build, I want to get this engine running. Now before I look around the engine and do a shopping list, I do have to answer that question that I posed on the last video. How high is the frame from the ground to the middle? So let's find out how high it is and who was closest. We have exactly seven inches, which is approximately 178 millimeters. And the winner is Lance Adams, 174, pretty close. Well done, Lance. Lance, email me with your home address and I'll send you one of these lovely stickers. I am so generous with my prizes. Hey, I said there wasn't going to be a prize, so can yourself lucky. Okay, back to work. Before I do an engine walk around and shopping list, uh, I will dig out all the parts that I do have so that we're not repeating ourselves. And then I'm going to go through the whole engine and I'll do a little key, you know, number one question mark. You can tell me what I'm looking at if I have questions. I do have a book, but you guys have got more experience than a book. And a book is always based on brand new parts, right? Let me dig out the parts and we'll see what we have. Okay, let's have a look. I don't think everything on this table is from this particular engine. I did bring a box of old RX-7 stuff over from Scotland, but I think it was from an FD. So if you see something that looks kind of FD rather than FC, then don't be too alarmed. As I say, it's, this is everything I've got RX-7 related. Okay, that is obviously from this. Oh, just to recap, it's 13B, 1987, turbo to engine. So that's the intercooler, obviously. It's got a couple of pipes attached. It's got a little heat shield. That looks in fine condition. I will be using that, at least for now. I don't really want to go to the hassle of mounting up front, front mount. I'm guessing these are oil, oil lines. A wee bit rusty looking, but the insides looks fine, so I can clean them up and use them. This, I think, came from Scotland. I have no idea if I can use that. Probably not. This is my intake, uh, flappy stuff. That needs a good clean, but everything looks reasonable condition. <laughs> what do I know? This looks like a little uh, thing. I don't know what that is. Kind of looks like a, a very small dump valve pressure valve, random bit of pipe. I know what that is, that is my transmission mount. I will be using that or at least adopting that. I don't know if that's from this one. I don't know about that or that or any of these. Let me know if I can use it. I know what that is, that's the water intake. That one goes there. So that's fine, that came with this engine. I don't know what this is. This looks extremely heavy duty. Again, it's got one of these little blow off valves. But this, what is that? I have no clue what that is. This will be my oil. 
filler thing, I'm guessing. I'll go there. Yes? No? Yes? I think so. Don't worry, we'll get to the engine soon. We're just looking at these random parts. That'll be my oil cooler. And obviously that's my intake manifold, I guess you'd call it. I don't know what that is. There's a bit of a spacer there. That's from the turbo. Random bit of hose. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm going to be in trouble. Um, I don't know what that is. Should probably be in this area. Okay, on to the electrical stuff. I do have a manual airflow meter thing. That looks exactly the same as the one I had on the MX-5s when I had them. Which I like. I like the, the mechanical ones rather than the electronic ones. I've got a choice of three ECUs. I've got the wiring loom for the engine. Got an alternator, which I got from Oz Can Industries. I'll talk about them in a wee bit. Um, yeah, I'm not too worried about the wiring. I actually quite enjoy wiring. Yeah, I'm weird that way. And I've got this rat's nest, but I have no idea if I'm going to be using any of this or some of it. We'll jump off that bridge when we get to it. Right, let's have a look at the engine. Let's start on the left-hand side, shall we? So, I need to identify a few things. This here has got a little wire sticking out of it. I'm guessing that's a sensor, but this has got a hole which I thought would also be a sensor. So let me know what they are. Let's call that number one. Number two. So the way this is going to work is you're going to leave a comment and just put one and then your comment, two, comment, you know, that kind of deal. Let's call this number three. I'm guessing because of the rust, that's a water pipe. Number three. Number four. This is a tricky one. I am going to guess that that is an oil in or out. So number four, what do you think that is? Spark plug holes, I know what they are. Uh, staying down in this area, this is confusing, right? This is obviously my motor mount. One, two, three, I'm missing a nut there obviously, but if someone can explain to me the point of this one down here, because it's not actually holding the motor mount in. What is the point of that? I've forgotten the number, so I'll do this post-edit, right? Let me know what that's for. I think there's one at the other side as well. Okay, moving upwards. Pretty sure that's where my oil goes, and presumably that's my dipstick. Correct me if I am wrong. If someone could tell me what this is. <laughs> got a wire it's just a single I have no idea what that is moving along let's go back down seem to have two sensors down the bottom this one's still attached this one is not so let me know what that is and let me know what that is moving along I am guessing that these studs are to hold either power steering or AC, which I will have neither of. So I'm, I'm, I'm guessing I can just remove these, but before I do it, uh, let me know. There's also a little broken section there, but again, I think this was probably to mount AC and power steering. So hopefully that doesn't matter. Moving up here, I'm guessing this is for timing adjusting. Would I be right? Would I be right? I'm guessing that goes down to the equivalent of a cam. So this would be like your cam position sensor. I'm guessing. There's another pipe there, which goes oh, way over there somewhere. I have no idea where all this oily stuff goes, but uh, don't worry about that. I'll figure that out later. And while we're on the left side of the engine, this one here, Again, I think that is oil. Let me know what that is. But that looks very similar to that one down there. Front of the engine, I'm obviously going to need a pulley. But hopefully I just need just one pulley. Actually, there's only place for one pulley. The other pulley would actually be on the alternator, which I believe sits up here. Yeah, I seem to have a 
a bolt missing there, but that would imply that something's been taken off of there. Let me know what's going on here. Why are they empty? I'll number that one. Um, down here. Oh my goodness, what is that? What is that monstrosity? Moving along. And, yeah, again, I'm not too worried about the wiring. I'll figure that out. It's, if there's anything obvious missing, what does this do? Oh, I have no idea what this does. It's some sort of levery thing. I'm guessing that's the coolant sensor. That looks like a water pipe. Again, anything that's rusty is probably a water pipe. Okay, getting into this section here, I'm pretty sure I am missing a fuel rail. I've got two injectors. One there, one there, but I think it's supposed to have four, correct me if I'm wrong, and I don't really have anything to connect these to a fuel line. So I need a fuel rail and then fuel line. While we're up here, anyone know what that is? Again, it looks rusty, so I'm thinking water. These, I'm guessing, are little oil injectors. There's two there and two there. Are they all injectors? I don't know. I'm guessing they are, because they've all got that weird brown piping. Okay, what else we got? Down this side of the intake, there's a big pipe here. I've no idea where that goes. I know where that one goes, the big one. That's the sucky-in one. And uh, this, is, this will be the big blowy-outy one. So I'm obviously going to need an exhaust. Uh, an exhaust, basically. A header. And I want it to come round here and out this way, somehow. So anything will do for this, as long as it fits in this section here, and I'll adapt to fit. Where does that go? And what's this? So I showed you a big actuator thing on the, or a wastegate, or whatever it's called on the table, which looks like that, but it's bigger. And I did remove it from down here. So do these turbos actually run two of these things? That's just greedy. Yeah, because that one that's on the table attaches to this. I have a lot to learn. And you guys can teach me all about it. So you're probably wondering why I'm fitting this engine when I know nothing about rotary engines. Well, the thing is, I knew nothing about Chevy V8s until I stripped one down and fitted it. And it runs fine. So it's the only way you learn. And it's not like there's classes you can go to to learn about rotary engines. Now, I know there's going to be some parts that I should buy new, like injectors, uh, spark plugs, that kind of stuff. But there's certain things I just can't get new, they're just not available. So I will be visiting Duncan at Ozcan Industries. You get it? He's Australian. He's local actually, in Guelph. Well, relatively local, he's only about an hour away. And he has a smorgasbord of rotary parts, so hit him up if you need anything worldwide. He ships worldwide, and he actually ships stuff back to Australia. Oh, the irony. So I will be visiting him. I know that I need to get coil packs and the fuel rail and various other bits and bobs, but that's where I need your help, because I don't actually know what I need. I don't know if I need all that oily rat's nest stuff or if there's a bypass. Please leave a comment. As I say, I'll categorise everything that I did round the engine, one, two, three, and just leave a comment next to the number, what you think the part is, if I need it, or maybe where I can get it. Okay, I'll do a slow-mo of the stuff on the table, just as a bit of a recap so you know what I've got.
So while you guys are solving all my problems, I am going to install the gearbox rear mount and the differential front mount. Oh, that reminds me, I'm going to need a prop shaft. I'll need to shorten it, obviously, I've only got that much, but I do need the front yoke and whatever attaches to the diff. Uh, thank you in advance for all your help. I'm going to need it. Take care. See you on the next one.